Our study focused on patients who had relapsed diffuse RP cell lymphoma after anticycline chemotherapy. Um, there's two big groups of patients, those who relapse early after treatment uh, with anthocycline, either between 12 months of being treated, or those who have relapsed late after uh, anthocycline containing chemotherapy one year or later. And we've observed that there's, uh, in previous trials, it's been observed that patients who have an early relapse have worse prognosis. And our intention was to focus uh, the analysis on patients who continue to respond to chemotherapy uh, despite belonging to the early group, which is usually a group that is considered to be chemorefractory with more frequency. Um, our findings, we included 291 patients that were enrolled from the Cleveland Clinic, uh, from University Hospitals Cleveland Medical Center, and from Washington University in St. Louis. And among those 291 patients, 182 patients, so about two thirds, had early relapse, so they were either refractory or had relapse within, within 12 months, and about a third of patients had relapsed late. And what we observed is that uh, the response rates um, were higher in the patients who relapsed late, but still approximately 30% of patients had res complete response uh, or complete remission to uh, our ice chemotherapy, uh, even if they had relapsed early. What is important of this is that it confirms what is, is observed in other trials uh, of CAR T cells where the standard of care arm with chemotherapy achieves complete remission rates in about 30 to 35% of patients uh, and suggests that there's a small group of patients who even though they relapse early after, after anthracycline containing chemotherapy, um, that they still will have chemosensitive disease. We generally have assigned that group as belonging to a group that's more frequently chemorefractory, but there's still a minority of patients that are chemosensitive. In practice, what happens is that even though CAR T's are approved for these patients, sometimes they cannot receive them either because they don't have access to them because of logistic issues or because of their disease is progressing so quickly that the time to manufacture CAR T's uh, doesn't allow them to wait uh, because the disease is progressing rapidly. So in general, those patients will be exposed to chemotherapy and then the clinicians are confronted with the fact that a patient has received chemotherapy and they may be responding to them and we have to decide what to do for consolidation or whether to continue with chemotherapy observe the response uh, and then do an autologous transplant. So we observe the patient with complete remission who then go on to an autologous transplant really have no differences whether they're early or late relapsers uh, in terms of their progression-free survival, overall survival, or the cumulative incidence of relapse between the two groups of early or late relapsers. This is important because long-term outcomes and long-term durable responses can be observed in this group. And it means that in a patient who who, even though they're early relapsers and they're supposed to be chemorefractory, if they happen to be chemosensitive, then continuing on to consolidation with an autologous transplant is a reasonable alternative. It does inform future trials where we need to understand whether consolidation with a different modality like CAR-Ts would provide an even further benefit, but that remains to be clarified.